Most of the ICT-based technologies, including AI and ML, have direct applications to marketing. And so if you think about the current rage, uh, Gen AI, which is now increasingly being adopted by companies in their marketing transformations. Uh, uh, with neuromarketing and uh, neurophysiology being blended, uh, marketers have increased opportunity to better understand consumer behavior. So in summary, if you look at all these technologies, the common theme is that there are rapid progresses or advances in these technologies and in turn they have immediate impact on how things are being marketed by managers. Um, most companies, about 85% of the firms in the U.S. have adopted some gen AI practice. 90% uh, of the firms have used AI in their marketing to redefine marketing. In personalization, uh, companies like Netflix, Amazon are increasingly using personalization to better understand and tailor offerings uh, to the customers. Almost all companies operating in international markets have the common uh, challenge of how do we market successfully in diverse set of countries, uh, in diverse cultures, amid the ongoing political, uh, geopolitical uh, tensions and turmoils. The biggest trend we are seeing in retail and e-commerce is the emergence of omnichannel uh, marketing and omnichannel buying. One of the commonalities in my approach to marketing research and marketing practice is, is to be curious, right? Any issue or any problem, start with some curiosity. When we talk about technologies and innovations, uh, I'd like to put it under two major buckets. One is the information and communication technology or ICT-based technologies, and then uh, the other is biotechnologies or bio innovations. Uh, for example, all the uh, developments in uh, AI, machine learning, uh, intelligence, I probably put it under ICT, but if you think about uh, developments including gene editing, interface of communications with neurophysiology, that would be under the uh, uh, biotechnology innovations. Now, most of the ICT-based technologies, including AI and ML, have direct applications to marketing. And so if you think about the current rage, uh, Gen AI, which is now increasingly being adopted by companies in their marketing transformations, uh, uh, whether you're talking about content creation or you're talking about uh, automating email marketing and uh, social media marketing, or you're talking about inventing new products, new business offerings, uh, all of these are being affected by Gen AI these days. And uh, when you talk about technologies like uh, biotechnologies, look at the applications in marketing. Uh, some of them have to do with uh, uh, the neuro side of uh, marketing, which is trying to understand consumer behavior, how these technologies help us to uh, understand consumer behavior and also to influence uh, consumer behavior. Uh, so these are the two sets of major technologies that have direct applications to marketing. However, uh, other technologies uh, such as gene editing, for example, also have a role to play in how you're marketing those uh, offerings to the uh, consumers. Uh, with neuromarketing and uh, neurophysiology being blended, uh, marketers have increased opportunity to better understand consumer behavior and also to affect or influence consumer behavior. So this will come handy in marketing communications, PR, uh, digital marketing, all these arenas uh, will have some lift thanks to the advancements in these uh, technologies. So in summary, if you look at all these technologies, the common theme is that uh, there are rap rapid progresses or advances in these technologies and in turn they have immediate impact on how things are being marketed by managers. And uh, these technologies also play a part in uh, the human AI interaction and uh, human technology interaction. And that, that is also being increasingly played out uh, in the marketplace even as we speak. Uh, as I mentioned before, AI uh, machine learning uh, have made already a significant impact on marketing practices. Uh, particularly general, generative AI has made uh, significant impact. Um, most companies, about 85% of the firms 
in the U.S. have adopted some gen AI practice. Ninety uh, percent of the firms have used AI in their marketing to redefine marketing, particularly you know customer facing part of marketing. So some of the areas in which uh, a gen AI has already has an impact is uh, starting from uh, customer demand management, understanding better customer needs, personalization of customer needs and offerings to the customers. Customer support is another area uh, where uh, Gen AI is being increasingly used. Uh, another area where AI in general is being used increasingly is predictive modeling. When you think about forecasting, predicting customer behavior, customer purchases, and also to better understand uh, the interventions required to change customer behavior. A-B tests to learn about customer behavior, customer preferences, and then to change that. In personalization, uh, companies like Netflix, Amazon are increasingly using personalization to better understand and tailor offerings uh, to the customers. Uh, in customer support, a lot of companies are replacing human uh, call centers with uh, Gen AI-assisted solutions and that is increasingly resulting in better outcomes. Um, then in the area of product development and product management, uh, new product creation, product modifications, AI is uh, playing a big part. So some of the game changers are still yet to come. This will come in uh, business model uh, innovations. So firms could use AI in general, traditional AI and gen AI to rapidly transform the way in which they create offerings, new offerings to the customers, and the way in which they make money. For example, a firm operating in a traditional banking or insurance space could uh, redefine what their business model looks like. They may get into spaces that they have not conventionally been before, and they could also change the way in which they price their offerings. They could change a uh, pricing model to a more of a subscription model or maybe a freemium model which includes some customers getting it for free and some customers paying a premium or uh, some customers getting free for some period of time and after which they have to pay to pay more. So these are all business model innovations that are enabled by new opportunities in AI and that's why I think I, I believe the game-changing innovations might take place. Um, I think nowadays you have a variety of Gen AI tools. All of them operate on some foundation or LLM models. Uh, different Gen AI tools have different uh, uh, strengths. Uh, some Gen AI tools are very strong with images. Some Gen AI tools are very strong with uh, text. Some of them offer multimodal. I can't pick one G Gen AI tool that has revolutionized something. Um, almost all the f companies are using uh, at least a chat GPT version of Gen AI. Most of them are using advanced versions. Many of them are using Gemini. Many of, some of them are using Anthropic, for example. Some of them are using GPT-40. Uh, most of them come with uh, interesting features uh, which are more geared towards experimenting and testing. Um, but uh, almost all the companies have one or more of these tools uh, to automate certain uh, mundane, repetitive tasks and even creative tasks, which uh, requires um, you to come up with, let's say, a new communication copy, ad copy, or maybe um, tasks which require you to create a new video or new set of music uh, combined with video. Uh, so many of the areas in which the uh, interesting applications are uh, coming through is in the creative areas. So I think the jury is still out on which of which are the game-changing ones and which are the ones that are good use cases. And over the next couple of years, I think we would see a lot more specific tools that will be more interesting. Almost all companies operating in international markets have the common uh, challenge of how do we market successfully in diverse set of countries uh, in diverse cultures amid the ongoing political, uh, geopolitical uh, tensions and turmoils. And many of the issues are very common to companies as to how to take their current products and offerings which are successful in their home countries to a multitude of markets where 
the uh, preferences might change, the cultures may be different, uh, the competition may be different, the rules are different. And many of the firms have to make choices whether to standardize their offerings or adapt these offerings to different countries. And uh, based on my experience working in different countries, visiting different countries, working with companies that operate in different countries, I feel like there are some very good best practice approaches that starting with uh, do a thorough uh, evaluation of the international markets for your offerings with a view to enter and then to develop the markets, to grow the customer base, and to also create partnerships with, in terms of mode of entry, uh, how to operate successful joint ventures, how to have good successful distribution partners. All these are continuous uh, issues for even the most successful companies. Some companies are remarkably successful across as many countries. For example, Netflix has presence in 190 countries and they are very successful. Some companies operate in a smaller set of countries, but then they make sure that they are successful in those countries. But all of them have similar challenges, uh, as I mentioned before, but they have to do their homework and hard work to be successful in those markets. Uh, the biggest trend we are seeing in uh, retail and e-commerce is the emergence of omni-channel uh, marketing and omni-channel buying. Customers across the industries, as FMCG, apparel, durables, durables, even B2B, uh, have become increasingly uh, omni-channel, embracing the brick and mortar channel, embracing the um, mobile channel, the uh, desktop channel, uh, and other smart device channels. And the challenge in the, for marketers is to understand uh, the different segments of customers for their products and offerings and the different combinations of the multiple channels that customers are using and understand their customer journey and at what points in time customers are being influenced by different channels and to use them to influence their buying behavior. And one of the trends we are seeing is consistent with the omni-channel marketing trend is the increasing presence of online channels and increasing uh, purchases in online channels. In the, if you track the purchase journey of most consumers and for most product categories, you would see that uh, it is a little bit more 360 degrees in the sense a, an average consumer may start uh, looking for a, searching for a product using a mobile app and then you know maybe use a iPad to look at more richer product descriptions, then may use a digital desktop to order something, and then maybe pick up the store, pick it up in store, and then maybe uh, evaluate the product later on, and may decide to return some of the items, and that return can take place either in another outlet or maybe by mailing it back. So you can see lots of channels, lots of touch points uh, happening. And today it is increasingly happening. Uh, these journeys across multiple channels are happening more often for more consumers. And uh, it, also there are different degrees of uh, margins for the uh, retailers and uh, whether they're direct to consumer or, or through the brick and mortar. And managing these assortment, managing these margins uh, become very important. And some of the trends in here are the D2C companies, direct-to-consumer companies, are opening bricks and mortar channels. And uh, companies with strong brick and mortar presence are increasingly using mobile apps to uh, get consumers into the store and also to make re repetitive orders through the mobile app. Uh, so these are some of the common trends that one is wit witnessing in e-commerce and retailing. One of the commonalities in my approach to marketing research and marketing practices is to be curious, right? Any issue or any problem, start with some curiosity. Uh, look at phenomena, whether it's consumer behavior or uh, business practice or a general trend or a new event that happens uh, in the world. Try to understand why rather than uh, just what. Uh, observe what phenomena uh, deeply and then ask questions why this happens and then try to push and understand, you know, what are these trends moving towards uh, and what are the interesting 
questions to ask to be able to understand and generate insights. So these are common to my approaches, starting with curiosity to understand why and then trying to understand the trends and see where it's going. And another facet of my research approach is, is trying to talk to practitioners, policymakers, decision makers to understand their thought process, how they make decisions currently, and try and see what would be the interesting issues uh, next several years down the road and how managers' uh, decision-making and managers' practice can change and what kind of answers to research questions can change those practices. First of all, congratulations to uh, Great Lakes Institute of Management on completing 20 years. It's a remarkable achievement. I'm proud to be associated with uh, Great Lakes. I owe my association to my mentor, uh, Dr. Bala Balachandran. He's a visionary, and uh, he thought about this institution when most of people were not even bullish about India at that given point in time. So hats off to him for uh, having this idea. Now, looking at the success this 20 years, uh, there are tremendous progress that has been made. Uh, and I've been fortunate to be associated with some of them. I'm, I'm fortunate to be visiting here uh, multiple times. And uh, as Great, uh, Great Lakes has moved uh, further and further uh, in its journey in the last 20 years, uh, my message to the uh, stakeholders of Great Lakes, including students, um, faculty, staff, uh, donors, recruiters, and uh, companies, all of these should be looking forward to the next 20 years, which would mean a more futuristic approach and orientation. Try to see what Great Lakes can do differently for the future. Some of this could be to do with the interplay of technology and management and business. Some of this could be to do with uh, how the future world uh, of uh, work will look like, how uh, markets will look like, how consumer behavior will look like, and then anticipate that and try to facilitate research in those directions and also uh, create programs and training to uh, all the audiences, uh, uh, PGP students, uh, executive students, and uh, influencing you know, policymakers, uh, create a body of knowledge that is forward-looking and futuristic. And given all the successes so far, I have every faith and confidence that Great Lakes will be able to do that.